have offensive line with Brandon Yates. Questions for Brandon? <coughs> So, Brandon, we know that, you know, you played center in a bowl game, you practiced there, but now it's full time at yeah. that position. So, what's that mean? How, how do you improve, even though you've been playing there, you know, a good bit practicing there in the past? Um, the way I kind of think about it is, um, when I just, when I first started doing center, it was more like 100 level classes, you know what I mean, 101, you know what I mean, just getting there, general knowledge type stuff. Now it's start, it's time to get into those 300 level classes. And really started getting a pass at a certain point and looking at the bigger picture and looking at outside of the guy in front of me, this uh, guy outside of the, um, like DNs and stuff like that, and understanding the whole big picture so I can get able on the right guys and also be ahead of all the, the twists and the blitz and the, the, all the different fronts. Um, just going out there and just kind of just improve upon the things I was good at and then you know, work on the things I was weak at, you know. So just going out here and just trying to do something different every single day. How do you approach following? Uh, what some people think may have been the best center to ever play here. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you, do you go about as I'm me, I'm going to play the way I play? How do, how do you yeah. approach it? Uh, I mean, you, me and Zach play completely different ways. You know, he's a kind of a wrestler kind of guy, more like athletic, get around and uh, stretch kind of guy. Um, but like seeing that guy, seeing how he works, you know, I mean, you just look at the things he does, you just kind of build that, that work ethic and just kind of bounce off the things he did, you know, um, going into that role. I mean, it stepped up my game another level because I know I got to go and fill those shoes. And also, I got to be a leader in that room. So it kicked up my game another level. And I had a great offseason based on that because I had to change my mentality up. I had to be a leader in the room and had to be, I had to follow those shoes. And I can't, we can't skip it. We can't miss a beat. Like, this is the year we should make a drastic jump and to get this 10 plus win. So I don't have a time to be going backwards. I have to be always going forward. It's the one thing you look at on tape or watching him study him, you go, dang, man, that guy, that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. special. What, what, what are some of the things? Um, he's really good with his hands because like, he's, he's a wrestler. He had a wrestling background. So when he grabs people, he's able to, to control that body weight and control them and bring them in and cinch them in and keep them tight. You know, looking at that, you know what I mean? I'm trying to in, in, in put that in my game myself and trying to improve upon that. But, yeah, they watch him. and he just, he just his, his hands are so strong, and he's able to do things with his hands that I don't think a lot of guys – in this draft class can do. My perception, you, you talk about leadership, my perception was you've always been sort of a vocal guy that, that had good leadership qualities. Do you, do you feel like you've always been there and do you have to even step that up further now? Um, yeah, I mean, coming in my second year, I, was, uh, I started playing uh, early. Um, it just, a, just a new guy coming on and the team was really relatively young. And you kind of got to step up, but I mean, I used to—I always wasn't like a very talkative guy. Like you ask anybody around here, I'm not like super talkative and stuff like that. But like, as I got older and as I got more comfortable, and uh, my work ethic even stepped up, like I felt more comfortable stepping up and, and calling guys out and doing these type of things and leading other guys. So uh, really, just came down to really just getting those reps and getting older and getting stronger and and. and now a lot more people respect you. More people respect you if you really out here putting in the work. Because if you're one of those guys, the loudest guys in the room, and don't do nothing, don't show up on time, don't do this in the third, and people are not gonna respect you. So you just gotta build that from day one. You gotta build it up every step of the way. Zach's wrestling. Yeah. Did you have a second sport in high school that, that you incorporated? Uh, my second sport was that was, was basketball. So like that came down to like foot speed and stuff like that. So that's why I, I like you know what I mean getting letting letting loose and get on the screens and running. It's just I just feel a little more comfortable doing that. Um, I feel like I, me personally, I feel like I could do anything, but yeah. Compare and contrast this offensive line to last year's. Um, I, I guess from the outside, people would say this one may be a little more athletic, the other one may be a little more physical, brawler type. How would you compare the two? Um, how I compare the two? I think, I, I think we'll still have, we still, I don't think anything's, anything's changed because we still have the same type of morals and identity, and nothing changes. So we're still going to go out there and be physical, but we're still going to add more things. We're, add, we're going to unleash our playbook a little bit more, and we're going to be able to do a lot more things and getting guys loose and getting on some screens and running and, and letting guys get loose and stuff like that. But I think we're still going to have that physical mentality. That just comes with our identity in the room. Is that a product of the experienced guys you got up front, you think? Uh, for sure. I think because we all we develop with each other. You know what I mean? We came in in this weight program, and we have all worked with each other. And we all, we, we're a close-knit group. So we go out there and we work together. We do extra extra workouts together and I think that came and we trust each other more so next guy in front next the guy next to me we should be, I trust him to do his job so I can be 100% and going fast and if I make a mistake my guy's going to pick me up 1000 1000% mental mention it, but, uh, go ahead um, the 
the move to center is the hardest thing learning how to make those calls? Um, I wouldn't say that because, I mean, I've been in this offense for a very long time. Nothing's really changed. Some of the terminology's changed, but I wouldn't say uh, it's really a big different. Um, since after being here for a while, you kind of get this bigger picture and you kind of see like what well, this is what the center's doing, this is what the guard's doing. So it makes my job much easier and I can make these calls. So I wouldn't say it was the calls was much different transition. I think it was just the, the looking at the defenses and, and reading them. You know what I mean? Instead of just making these calls, I had to read the defense and, and, and call different things based on that. And how, how big was it that you got to, you played the bowl game at center, so now coming into this year, you at least know what it's like for, you know, you have that one game point of reference. Yeah. Um, I think that was huge. Um, we, Coach talked about it, like that bowl game was kind of started the 2024 season and really went out there and kind of used it as like, oh, this is for next year and just really just see where I'm at and see what any things I need to work on. And I think I, I think I did pretty well in the bowl game for coming in kind of short notice and stuff like that. So I think, I think it really worked out pretty well. Speaking of short notice, biggest challenge of your career was that last drive against Baylor when you had to go in. Walk us through that. I mean, that was that had to be frenetic. It had to be pretty hectic. Um, situations like that, like I wouldn't say it was like really really tough situation. I just went in there kind of like practice. We practice that all the time. We do mock games and oh Zach goes down, get in there. I run in there. And, and you know what I mean? So we, we practice things like that, situations like that, and for sure. And I've been, I've been working practice. Like every practice, I work center every single day. So I'm doing the same things Zach's doing throughout the week. He goes in for a couple of plays. I go in for a couple of plays. I get the front calls. He gets the front calls. So I'm doing everything. I was That whole week, I was doing things like a right guard, and I was doing things like a center, and I do things like a left guard. I do things in my brain, like, kind of like the whole starting. So anybody goes down, I can do anything. And that was my thing. Were you on the field and switched over? Is that what happened? Or no, I was, on the, I was on the sideline. I was still in kind of concussion protocol, so I was still like, I was still doing limited reps. And that when he went down, I came in and kind of just. And then <laughs> went yeah. to a, a big yeah. fog. Yeah, yeah. Brandon, I, I was on the sidelines for that game. It, it looked to me like you you didn't have your helmet on you initially. You had to grab your helmet and everything's going. Am I right? You, yeah, because we we I think we. Uh, we just finished a drive, and I think we just got the ball back. I was already, I was down, like I was probably like down like 20 yards all the way down here, and then I saw Zach go down, and then I saw him like get up kind of slow, so I immediately started running down. So I knew already like I had to come in, so I started running down already. Okay, question away from football. I understand you had an interesting spring break. Uh, yeah. So walk me through your your missionary trip. Um, just really just uh, that. When I think about the mission strip, I think about like I, I was blessed to be in a position like uh, playing football and seeing this that and this this world and really, we're in a really privileged situation, and going over there you really see people that really have it different than you. Like there, I seen kids living in sheds. Only people that can protect them was three guard dogs. You know what I mean? So you go over there and see that, and you're able to help them and give them a helping hand. Like I would do that 1,000 percent again and again and again. And um, I think I'm just in a really privileged and blessed, blessed position to really be able to go out there and lend a helping hand and, and use my body for, to be a vessel for, for God. And I think that was, that was huge for me. And I really, really can look at it and just come back here and, and kind of use that in my development. Like, I, you know what I mean? All these things, and I'll say football practice is hard. Just imagine you don't know what you're going to eat that night and, what you're gonna, and who's going to come home and protect you. And if I'm going to have clean water that day, like I go to practice and I got people – hosing me down with clean water and stuff like that and people chasing me down just give me water you know what I mean and it's just it's really uh it's really crazy to go up there and see that type of stuff and it really puts me in perspective right yes and what what did you actually do when you went over there went over there and uh there's a there's a Christian school over there and they work with uh uh the people in the community and they wanted us to go over there and we built it uh we built a stove for one lady and her family and then we went and did uh food orders and and we gave out socks to people and water filters, so that was really huge. Even any comp tickets for anybody in Guatemala? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they, yeah. their, their big thing over there is running. They like to run over there, so they probably wouldn't even care about football. Did you explain to them you're a college football player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, the average, they're, they're, they're Mayan descent. Like, their average height over there is probably like five feet tall, so I, I still got like a sore thumb. Like, they looked at me. <laughs> they were really confused. They, yeah, they could have thought I was anybody at that point. Right. Yeah. But a church trip, I assume, um, and in what church did you go through? Um, I kind of just did it like a family type of thing. I did like a family type of thing. They usually do with with a church, but this time we just kind of went as a family. But um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Who went with you then? Me, um, my wife and her family. Mm-hmm. And then that was pretty much it. Something you'd do again? I mean, you'd... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to bring more guys, more mm-hmm. guys this time. More guys this time. Hard, but something worthwhile, I guess, is a good way. I mean, seeing something like that can't be yeah. easy. Oh, definitely not. For sure not. Because it just really just puts everything in perspective and, and how your life is going and how you do things and stuff like that, yeah. Is that in line with what you want to do in your life? Um, yeah. Helping yeah, yeah, yeah. And service yeah, yeah, yeah. And all for sure. That. I mean, wherever I'm doing in life, I for sure just want to um, come back and, and go to that place and just help out again. Like, even next mm-hmm. year, like, when I'm doing, like, my prep for the draft and stuff like that, I for sure want to do that trip during the spring break. Well, whose idea was it? Was it your wife? Was it you? Was it your family? How did, how did this all come about? Um, th- that's a thing they've been doing for years. They've been doing that for years now, and um, – we finally got the the right time, and they kind of planned it a year and ahead. And they found out the spring break schedule, so it was the best time for me to come, for me to come and uh, do some manual labor. I would say, they have, only me and her dad was the only guys on the trip <laughs> with muscles, so we, I, they had to wait for me, I guess. Gotcha, Brandon. Get back to playing center a little bit. You, as, as often as you guys operate in shotgun, what goes into I guess successful snaps and understanding I guess that. The ones that are successful go unnoticed, and the yeah. ones that go unnoticed are, are the bad ones, I guess. Yeah. Um, with that, I just kind of just kind of do the same routine and, and being consistent, finding things that work for me. Um, like look at the where, where my hands play. Some guys like doing different kinds of snaps and and uh, different hand placements. Uh, I just gotta find out what works out for me and what I can really let loose in and not feel like I'm having to slow it down. I can just be one flowing motion. So that's for me. Just have it flow and kind of be consistent the whole time so consistent snaps I'm getting the same spot every single time and I can really just build upon that excluding your buddies take them out of this give me some guys that are jumping out at you this spring that you're like whoa um, they're, they're, they've made a big jump yeah. or people that we don't know about that are gonna possibly uh, make a difference next year I think people that's made a really really big jump is uh, Johnny Williams he's done a really really good job and being consistent, he's being a lot more physical. Um, he had a really good off season, really working hard to get stronger. He's a young guy, so has a young body, but I think he's still trying to. He's still start, starting to figure out like how to use his body, because he has a big frame, and I think he's just still getting into this mode. But I think he's really coming along, and I think he looks really, really good right now. Him and Landon, Landon's doing pretty good. He's been the, been in the program for a couple of years. He had a really good off season, getting stronger. He's making good mic calls and stuff like that, and he's really trying to become more of a leader in the room. And I think my job is just continue to push those guys because I don't want them guys to get complacent because they do look at us like we're fifth year, sixth year guys and like, oh, we're not going to play. But you still have to practice like you have to play uh, snap one at Penn State. And uh, you guys still got to work hard and still get better in, in the spring reps because you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like one thing can happen. And Look around. How about guys you're going against? Who's going out, you're going against that you're like, whoa? Uh, I think our defense right now looks really, really, really good. Really, really good. I think um, Fatorma, he's doing a really good job. He's super strong, long-armed guy. Uh, him and Russell, he's really going to surprise a lot of people. He's working hard. He's getting his body right. He's continuing to come along. And um, we got new guys like TJ Jackson. He's coming in. He's doing pretty well in pass pro, pass pro reps. He's doing really, he's moving well. Sean Martin, he's using his arms. He's using his length. He's getting, he's, he's feeling pretty strong. Uh, we could say uh, Josiah Trotter. Trotter, he's doing pretty well. Um, he's 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 a freak of nature. You know what I mean? You see his family, what he his family does. He's he's out there flying around. He's he's seeing stuff before stuff even develops. Like he's gonna be a really really good key part for us. I think everybody in the defense right now is looking really really good. Is he tough to reach? Get to? Um, for me, I wouldn't say no because you know what I mean. I I know what he's gonna do. I see it coming. I see a lot of football. So it's but he's he's moving. He's 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 making us work, and he's really he's really moving. He's doing a really good job. No issues. Him laterally or movement or any what? No, nah, no, nah, he's 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 he's, he's explosive. He's flying around. You can see him moving around. Like if you see him move, he don't he don't like nothing happen to him. He's he's flying, he's flying. Brandon, you were talking earlier about your basketball background. Sean was in here earlier. He's got a basketball background. Rodney obviously as well. If you created a starting five out of current WVU football players on the basketball court, who, who would you put out there? I for sure. Okay, yeah, it'd be Rodney, him. Um, it will be Aiden. He's pretty good. And then the last guy. I'm trying to think. Who else? I'm thinking of guys that played basketball on the team. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Like we got, we got Sean. He's gonna be at the five. <laughs> <laughs> he's for sure gonna be at the five. Yeah, you get any power forwards yourself? I'll probably use myself as a power forward. You know, I can just spread the floor. Um, I'm trying to think of another small guy. I'll probably use Arby Burks. He shot one free throw in here. He actually made it. So I'll, I'll go with him. <laughs> he, yeah, a lot of not a lot of guys are making this free throw. Nick was good in high school. It does, yeah, he'll be our, he'll be he our six man. Up. He'll be our six man. We just can't have to be. We can't. We can't be. Yeah, we gotta do a little. We gotta uh, lower down the size a little bit. Do you and, and Nick as well? You guys are sixth year guys. Do you feel old? Oh, for sure. Like when you look around and you ask guys what year they was born, they say 2006. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I shouldn't be here with you, but no, nah, we, we look at each other. We still try to keep it, keep it young, I guess. We're trying to still try to move around and run around. But yeah, we do look at each other like, man, we feel we are old, you know what I mean? So when our knees are hurting, our backs hurting, we in there doing extra recovery, yeah, we can feel it a little bit. Are you the only married guy left now? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about with Zach and his wrestling background, I'm not saying you picked up wrestling, but anything that could, I don't know, close that gap of how he was so good there, and, and you're trying to develop that other exercises, skills, things like that that you've been working on. Um, with that, I just gotta be conscious of where my hands are at every single rep. Still trying to work on it, still trying to get better at it. That just comes with this um, grip strength and just being strong and uh, just working on that stuff and being conscious of it. Like if you're conscious of it, I think you'll be able to do it. My thing is go out in there, practice, and I'm trying to look at, look at one thing I need to work on. If I need to be my snap hand, my off hand, just need to work on those type of things.